I'm feeling good today. I got the vlog edited and uploaded by like 8.30 this morning. That never happens. Yes! It is 9.48 a.m. And at 10 a.m. I'm hopping on a Skype call uh, for the Masculine Style Podcast. It's gonna be a great day, you guys. I'm feeling it, just deep down. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think a big part of it is just the Leathercraft community is really open. There's a lot more community than there is competition. And everybody's talking to each other, messaging each other. What do you use for this? What tools do you like for this? Yeah, I know you're in the same boat as well. I think we talked about that when we ran into each other. Uh, where were we? <laughs> yeah, that's what I... <laughs> I appreciate you even thinking about us for this. This means a lot. Cool. Sounds good, man. It's good talking. All right. Bye-bye. There it is. So this is Tanner Guzzi, and he's got a blog called Masculine Style, uh, blog, podcast, uh, Twitter feed, YouTube channel. I mean, he's all over the place, and he's just got some really cool content. He helps guys dress better and things like that. Um, but the, the, the podcast was a lot more about um, our brand and how we developed our style and things like that. And so I was very honored to be on. I've never considered myself like a stylish person. So I was a little taken back and like worried about what we're going to talk about. I'm like, man, I mean, I'm, I'm just not like a fashionable guy. But uh, a lot of it had to do with more like how we've developed our style in the brand and things like that. And that I can talk about. So, so it just turned out really well. It's time to get some work done. Well, that didn't last very long. I already got to take off because I need to take our camp trailer in. I've got an appointment with a repair shop over here to get our camp trailer looked at. I'm going to take it out there and uh, Whit and the kids are going to come with me. We're going to get lunch while we're out. So we'll get back to this after the thing. All right, let's go. I recruited some help to go get the trailer. You going to help me out, buddy? Here we go. Don't leave us out, way. All right, I'm back. Got that gosh dang trailer dealt with. We got some lunch and I'm ready to get back to these wallets. So let's get it. I can't find the other billfold. They have an order for two billfolds and the other one is gone. I bet that's your culprit right there. That's the only thing I can think. I've looked <laughs> everywhere. Here's the order haul today. Got a couple bags. If you ordered a russet, Oh wait, there's another russet going out today. So we've got three bags going out today. And then uh, all those goodies. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just about to wrap up these four wallets, but before I do, I just wanted to talk about something that I realized as I'm sitting here prepping these edges for some edge paint. I'm thinking back in time over my evolution of, of doing this work, and I'm realizing that my strategy on edges has changed a little bit. I think that I used to think that the harder and faster you burnish, the, the better it's gonna be. You just brrrr till smoke's coming off, but the, there's problems with that. If you apply too much friction and you don't have a burnishing agent on there, or it's starting to rub off, then you're gonna start burning the edge and that'll darken it. If you wanna make sure that the edges don't get any darker than the rest of your leather, then you're gonna to wanna to use something like this. Picked up some tokenol from District Leather Supply and this stuff's awesome. So if I'm gonna be burnishing an edge that I'm not gonna ink up later, then I use this because this does the best job at preventing your edges from heating up too much when you're burnishing. But I like to just get a really nice glassy edge before I lay down some edge paint. And I think for that job, the best thing that you can use is just a little bit of water and then just some light constant friction with this. And it's funny, you'll know when you're doing it right because the leather's gonna start doing a little squeak. Like you'll hear it kind of once you get that, that's the most beautiful sound. That's how you know you're really starting to glass up that edge and you're doing it right. Um, so water's a really good option. It's a lot more affordable. And if you're just going to be inking it up anyway with edge paint, then you don't need to worry about like darkening the edges or anything. But if you just want a perfect, clean edge that's just pure glass without any discoloration at all, I would recommend using just a little bit of tokenol and then just some really light friction with that slicker and you're gonna be right in that sweet spot. And then of course you can always finish it up with like a little beeswax or something. That's a really good way just to kind of seal it up. But um, I am amazed at how beautiful the edges can get with just a little bit of water and a little bit of light friction with that wood slicker. So my thoughts have changed quite a bit on this. I used to believe that you had to go hard and fast on those edges and I thought that the more friction and the more speed you applied, the better your edge is gonna be and that's just not the case. Go get yourself like one of the cheapest leather tools you can find, a wooden slicker. You can probably make one of these if you've got a lathe and you can get some beautiful edges. All right, I'm gonna ink these up, wrap it up and I'm gonna head back in. Let's finish these bad boys. Oh, by the way, this is not a thorough in-depth uh, tutorial on burnishing edges. This is just, that was just a quick little tip while I'm getting these uh, ready for edge paint. But we need to do a video soon with uh, like the full process, like from, you know, all the different grits of sandpaper and canvas cloths and burnishing agents and all that. We'll get into it, but I don't want to do it on black leather. It's harder to see. So yeah, we'll do that soon. That's coming up. <laughs> Let's read some comments. This is from Richard Hartman. He said, great video, man. I struggle with perfection and I know it's not attainable. So thanks for reminding me that imperfection is character. Let's see, this is from Hamiltoes. Great name. <laughs> thanks for all the videos and tips, man. Can't wait until I can afford my own industrial equipment. I'm slowly grinding my way up. Thanks for the inspiration. So cool. Little King Good said, great tips, dude. This was the video about um, preventing marks on your sewing machine and uh, he's got the same machine I do, the 1508. Love Ryan from Little King Goods, go check him out. Well that's it, thank you guys for the comments. I love reading your comments. I can't always get to all of them, but I try. Reading them always makes my day, so thank you so much. Do I say thank you too much? <laughs> you should know that I really mean it. I don't just habitually put that at the end of my video. I deeply mean that. Thank you guys. It's been a good day. Hope you guys had a good one. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Bye guys! <laughs>